one with each other and one with you. So I ask blessings upon us as we are going. That our minds shall be open, that our hearts shall be open to receive the message that you are to give to each one of us. I ask blessings upon us gathering in your precious and holy name, Jesus, our beloved Christ. Amen. 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 Please be seated. And welcome this morning. and haven't been here in a while, if you wouldn't mind just to raise your hand so we can acknowledge you and welcome you here today. You're right there in the back. <laughs> and the ushers, we ha the ushers have um, a gift for you. It is our book. Um, it's actually, it's from a past pastor. It's God is with you. And it, Reverend uh, Dr. Jeff Pulling, it is a book on the Lord's Prayer. So we ask that you um, take this, receive this, and, uh, and if you did not get one last week, please pick one up as you uh, leave today. Uh, they are our gift <coughs> to you, um, indeed. We also just have a few announcements for you. Yes, those pesky little phones. <laughs> please take your phone out, whichever version it might be. Check in if you have Facebook, and then <laughs> silence it. Thank you very much. You have now heard the message. We also had just have a few other things. If you did not receive your um, your bulletin as you walked in, the ushers will give you one also. But with that, we also have a few pieces of paper. One is our prayer card. We do believe in the power of prayer and of sharing our praises with each other as well. Um, there is actually a praise that will be shared later that is an answer to a prayer shared just recently um, with a uh, friend, Clara Louise. And so uh, let's share them with each other. If this is a confidential prayer, please circle yes on the bottom. If it is one that you would like us to share with each other, just circle no and we will read it aloud at prayer time. And uh, additionally, if you are with us uh, for the first time uh, or you have an update to any of your information, please fill out the blue card and put it in the offering basket at offering time. We also supply a, an offering envelope if you would like to use that. On the back, you'll also see a few announcements. We have some important meetings. We're going to be, uh, we've set some important dates. We have our uh, mem first membership class is that are coming up. You, all you have to do is attend one. There are two dates that are set, though. You'll see the dates in here. Um, the first one is after church next Sunday. We'll try to make it easy so you don't have to come, uh, come on over in the middle of the week if you live at a distance away. And the other one is also... Um, a few weeks out, but it's on an evening uh, during the week. We also have our next uh, congregational forum set, our congregational meeting, our board meetings, etc. We had a very productive board meeting last week, and uh, the board is on top of it in getting things together. We also have, speaking of, um, of dates, we're next Sunday we're going to start our second offering collection, um, our second offering collection, and it's for our Helping Hands ministry. Uh, we're going to be kickstarting again um, the ministry that I know Pompeo and uh, Dick have held very close to their hearts in uh, helping to feed those in need. You will see, and thank you to Clary and B also for bringing our first um, first bits of food for our drive. Um, anything that you have that's non-perishable, please bring any Sunday or during the week, and then they will bring it to the food pantry um, that we work with every Friday. So please put that on. And speaking of Clara and me, I do want to acknowledge them. Uh, if you go out into our beautiful um, outdoors, which is incredible, and you're going to see some new plastic chairs. They last week they uh, they uh, gifted us with probably like 20, 30 um, new chairs out there. So let's give them a big. Round. The uh, other thing is that we, uh, I do want to just acknowledge um, some folks who are here. Um, Reverend Darren, we all know Reverend yeah. Darren, who was in church here. And then he moved to Portland, and now he's back permanently? Okay. So here for six months in San Diego. Okay, 
So he's with, he's uh, back for the next six months. So I'm so, so delighted that you're here with us. And, um, and Isaac, and it's good, great to see you. And we also have um, a birthday girl who is with us, Reverend Annette Brooks. Yeah. And speaking of, are there any other um, bird people who had birthdays in July? That's right. And over here. So we would like to acknowledge all of you who either had or are going to have a July birthday and to, um, to sing you all happy birthday. Church, um, make sure uh, uh, Lane and certain has or whoever's running it. Um, and if he needs a hand, get my daughter. She's here. She'll help you. She's hiding away, but uh, right now. But uh, yes, we have snow cones. It's like let's have fun all the way through the day. And speaking of fun, let's turn to one another and welcome each other in our spirit and peace of Christ. <laughs>
from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3. Translations are from the New International Version, the message, Reverend Pat, as well as from the aromatic of Neil Douglas Clark. Listen to the message the Spirit has for you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. NIV. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and God's rule. The message. <coughs> Empty yourself, Reverend Dr. Pat Langley. Happy and aligned with the one or those who find their home in the breathing, to them belong the inner kingdom and queendom of heaven. Blessed are those who are refined in breath. They shall find their ruling principles and ideals guided by God's light. Tuned to the source are those who live by breathing unity. Their I can is included in God's. Healthy are those who devotedly hold fast to the spirit of life. Holding them is the cosmic ruler of all that shines and rises. Resisting corruption, possessing integrity for those whose breath forms a luminous sphere. They hear the universal word and feel the earth's power to accomplish it through their own hands. Healed are those who devote <coughs> themselves to the link of spirit. The design of the universe is rendered through their form. Neil Douglas Clark. This ends our reading. May God open up these words to our hearts and to our minds.
was new with this last week, and uh, I met with her this week. Uh, she'll, she'll be back. She just isn't out of town right now. Uh, but she said, uh, you know, when I saw the name of the group who was doing uh, singing last, last week, it's the same group who um, sang this week, the Bad Bears and Leathermen for Jesus. I've got to get them all in there. She said, I knew I was in the right place. <laughs> You know, you can minister to people just by your presence. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So today, last week, we talked a little bit about the Lord's Prayer, one of my favorites. And now we're going to get to embark on truly my favorite, and that is the teachings of the Beatitudes. As I've said the last few weeks, and especially last week, you know, what, I, what I've been sharing with you, and we'll share for seven more weeks, are foundational teachings for me. You know, I, I talked about never losing our hope, our joy, our faith, our praise. Talked about trusting in God, period. Talked about who we are as a congregation, being one that lives compassion, loves creation, and is a caring community of Christ. But how do we do all of that? And how do we do all of that and more? And I truly believe it is done first and foremost by prayer. That's why we talked about the Lord's Prayer last week. And also by, by embracing and delving deeply into what I truly believe is the, as someone had said, the inaugural address of Jesus. And that is his teachings of the Beatitudes. One could say it's his thesis. It's everything, when you look at all of his teachings and what he has to say and what he did, a lot of it is based, you can go back to the Beatitudes and see where a lot of his teachings come from. I, I truly believe that when we get to, when we embrace our foundation, the rest of it just is an outflow, to coin a phrase that a dear friend of mine tells me often. It's an outflow, meaning that once we embrace it, once it becomes a part of it, we have no choice but to just flow freely. You know, when God is in us, when we spend a lot, how many of you find a difference in your week when you've done prayer or whatever, you, whatever it is for you, prayer, meditation, singing, you know, when you've really been immersed in the spirit versus a week when it's just been crazy? How's your outlook? <laughs> is it different? <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. Mine is. I tell you, you know, one of, <laughs> one of, <laughs> one of my spiritual disciplines is sleeping. <laughs> I have found if I do not sleep, if I do not sleep, everything else is lost. Because <laughs> if I don't get rest, when I, don't, when I don't take time to intentionally rest. And it's hard for me because I was raised in a family that if you ever stopped, if you weren't doing something, you weren't cleaning, you weren't doing your homework, you weren't mowing the lawn, washing the car, whatever, you were being lazy. So it's very difficult for me to just to stop and just to enjoy. But you know, having a kid, that's I guess, you know, a part of the joy of that. You have to enjoy to be in the moment. But if you don't sleep, it's not enjoyable. Anyway, I digress. So, so going back to the foundation of the teachings of Jesus, the Beatitudes, we find a lot of different things. We're only gonna talk about what they are and only the first one today. Because there's so much in it, we can't talk about it all in one day. And I want to just briefly share with you kind of where do the Beatitudes fit in in things? As we said, as I mentioned last week, in Matthew 4, Jesus went to the desert. And he spent 40 days and 40 nights there, all oh, by himself, with the scorpions and the lizards and the snakes and all those other fun critters. But he spent 40 days there. Some say he was there being tempted. 
I would say so. But he had no clutter. It was kind of a self-imposed retreat. And in that, he came out of that experience emptied. There was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, there was no Snapchat, there was none of that. No email. Can you imagine going 40 days without any of that? Ouch. I don't know if I'm going to try. Anyway, so he did 40 days and he came back and he collected up his first followers. He got his first 12 followers. And then he did some healing and people heard about it. And, you know, people want to know a little bit more about this guy. And they, throngs of people came. And so what did he do? He went to the top of a mountain and he sat down and he began to teach. That's nice. And just in those two things alone, Jesus sets the tone for who he was. Mountaintop. We hear that over and over again in scripture in important times, don't we? What happens at the mountaintop? What happened in the mountaintop? Moses? Mm -hmm. Moses went to the mountaintop and received the Ten Commandments. Uh, later on in Jesus' ministry, Jesus went to the mountaintop and there was, ooh, all the bright light, transfiguration. And other times, the mountaintop experiences. In Jewish culture and religion, if you were at the mountaintop, that was the closest place you could be to God. That is where the veil, if you will, was the thinnest, where you were as close to God as humanly possible. Jesus went to the top of the mountain. He was as close to God as he could be to receive and to share. The other thing I think that's fascinating about this is that he went to a mountaintop. He didn't go to the temple. He could have given his first profound teaching in a temple. Not that they would have welcomed him. <laughs> Remember when he took the scroll out and in Luke and he read, right? And they, they chased him out. Who is this? This is just Jesus. He's the son of a carpenter. Who is this guy? Well, he said, uh-uh. We're not going to worry about churches and synagogues closing God in. Jesus went to nature what I believe is the most beautiful cathedral of all. Jesus made a decision then to, to truly tell to the world, my sanctuary is God's creation. He chose God's sanctuary at the top of the mountain to give an important message in life. And then he sat down. You might say, so what? When I read that and reread that for many years, I'm like, and? Well, unlike today, the teachers, the preachers, sat. Because sitting to teach was claiming his authority. So what he did is he had just been in the desert. He had come out of that experience, that intimacy with God. He went to the top of the mountain to sit and claim his authority, to claim his authority as the son of God and as a teacher of wisdom. I think that's cool stuff. <laughs> I think that's cool stuff because that shows us that, wow, Jesus, we can't put him in a box. We can't put him in a box. We can't even put him in a denomination because indeed he crosses all those barriers. Can you imagine today if Jesus came back today, which church would he go into? <laughs> right? Huh? MCC. MCC, yeah. MCC. But could you just see it? Well, Jesus came into my church. <laughs> Jesus came into my denomination. Jesus went over that and went for all of us. And then he sat and he began to teach. And the first beatitude that he taught Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Now, I purposefully gave four different translations or interpretations in scripture. I am going to highly recommend that you go to BibleGateway.com and you pull up Matthew 5 and you read the Beatitudes in all of these different translations. The NIV or the King James were most likely the one that we are all familiar with. But I'm going to tell you, in this one, the message is very accurate, very accurate when it comes to how close it is to the Aramaic translation. Amplified is always a great translation as well. My, my translation, by the way, let me share it with you. Empty yourself. Get the clutter out of the way. Allow healing to come to you. Find your pure essence and ground yourself. Fill up with the divine. Pour out the love of God that overflows become a part of community. Birth mercy, live with compassion, see the love of God in you, pray, make a difference. Embody your divine potential and hang in there. God is with you when things get tough. Fear not, relax in the arms of God out of you. Come back to me. It's tough out there. So says God. But for the first beatitude that we are used to hearing, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. We oftentimes get this one confused with blessed are the poor. How many of you have heard of this as blessed are the poor? Right? Blessed are the poor. That's not what Jesus is saying. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And many of us might go, what on earth does that mean? How many, are in, how many are of us are um, familiar with 12 steps? Okay, what's the first step? We admit that we are powerless over. And we surrender ourselves, right? See, actually, that I want to write this book. I want to write a book of this, by the way, these teachings come from my dissertation. But what I want to, to do is write a book of the intersection of the Beatitudes and the 12 Steps. Because I really believe that the Beatitudes are the original 12 Steps. They really are. My opinion, but who am I to say? <laughs> but going back to Jesus, he says the first step that we have to do in life is to empty ourselves, to be humble in spirit. Does that make a little bit more sense? Those who are humble in spirit, those who have emptied themselves, those who are poor in spirit, those who have, have said, I, I'm empty, I am here for you to fill me up. Blessed are those for indeed they shall receive the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? How many of us have a really long list of clutter in our head and in our heart that we need to like take out to the trash? Right? How many? Old tapes, I am not worthy. How many have had that go on in their life? I am not worthy. Guilt. Where are some other ones? Shame. Disappointment. Disappointment. Abuse. Resentment. Ooh, nobody in here has ever had that. Resentment. Anger. Ang ooh, anger. Regrets. Regret. Regrets. Regrets. How many of these clutter our mind and our heart? Is there any room for God in there? Not a lot, is there? Because the more that we hold on to this pain, the more that we hold on to the regrets, the I am not worthy, the shame, the broken relationships, the more we hold on to that, the less 
room there is for God. The less room there is for God. I think Jesus knew what he was talking about. I really think he knew what he was talking about when he was putting forth to people, here's your starting point. Empty yourself. Be humble before God. It's okay to be poor in spirit. It's okay to say, I don't have all of the answers. Usually when we think of poor, we usually think monetary, right? We don't have enough money. Poor in spirit. I don't have enough God. But I'm willing. But I'm willing. I'm willing to put it all out there to say that indeed I am humble in spirit. For in doing so, there is room for more. This beatitude also connects us to the breath of God. The use of the word spirit also means ruha. <laughs> the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. That when we allow ourselves, when we know that we need more of the spirit of God, the breath and the soul, whatever moves and stirs and animates and links us back to life, then we are on the track to receiving the kingdom of heaven. The word that we know as kingdom of God, here's another one, ready? I'm just gonna show off, Melkutoch. It's the Aramaic word for heaven. The kingdom of heaven is also an important word and concept. Because when we think of the kingdom of God, I see it as all of our potential. When we are in the kingdom of God, we are in our, the potential to receive all of the blessings that God has to bestow upon us. And how can we receive that if we are all cluttered? We can't. We can't. When we say, I am ready, I am humble, I am empty, fill me, then indeed we are ready to receive the blessings that God has for us, the potential that God, how many of us are living up to our potential? Let me rephrase that. How many of us can do more to live up to our potential? And how many of us want to? All right. It's a lot of hands. This church has a lot of potential, doesn't it? This church has, amen? Amen. This church has been in fullness, and it will be in fullness again. Amen? Amen. You notice that it, the last few months I've, I've said to people one-on-one, -on -one, my, my, my goal and, and my focus has been to do care and feeding, if you will, one-on-ones, provide opportunities to fellowship, and then ministry will happen. And I'm so blessed that the first ministries that we're going to start kicking off in earnest are going to be reaching out to feed those who need assistance. Amen? So we are beginning to step back into our fullness, our potential. And our potential is going to come from each of us. Because what I'm going to ask each of you in these next few weeks is, what are the blessings that you have that you want to see this church bless the community with? Amen? What is it? What is it? It's exciting. I do the happy dance. I won't embarrass her. I won't do it. But when we empty ourselves and say we need more of God, we can do more into this world. You know, for those who are in the queer community especially, and queer, by the way, means not just one sexual orientation, I liken it to those who are on the margins those who've been left out. You know, when I originally started to write my dissertation years ago, <laughs> 15, 20 years ago, it's done, by the way. <laughs> it's finished a long time ago. But, you know, things facing the giblet community, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender,
in the community was a lot worse than it was is now. And then we went into this great period where I was like, I'll be honest, I was thinking because, you know, one of these days I hope, woo, I might publish, woo, you know. But in doing that, I thought, wow, I'm going to have to change this completely because, you know, there's no bad things happening to the overall, to the GLBT community because, you know, we had marriage and we were being accepted and we could adopt. And that's all changed. And I realize there is always a need for those who are on the outskirts of society to always, always, always need the love and support of God, probably even more so than those who walk in the middle of the road. We all have our stories. We all have our stories Have we been on the left out as because of who we love or who we are attracted to, but some of us are on the edges for different reasons. For different reasons. And so for those of us who might live our lives on the edges, I believe we need the message of the blessings, even more. Even more. Because by the time we're done in these teachings, I hope to God there isn't anybody in this room that is still holding on to the shame, the blame, the guilt, the regrets, the what ifs, the I didn't do it, I am not good enoughs. Because I'm going to tell you what, brothers and sisters, I do not claim that. I claim instead that we are in the kingdom of God here on earth today, living into our potential as individuals, as a community of faith, and as a church. Amen? Because what I want us to focus on, what I want us to focus on are the blessings that we are receiving today. I want us all to make an agreement with each other, to make an agreement with yourself and with one another, that the past is the past. Here's an interesting side note. The Beatitudes are all written in the present tense. And I think that's important because it reminds us that we can't hold on to what's in the past and we can't wait for what might happen to live fully in the presence of Christ today. Amen. Amen. So today, today, are we willing to empty ourselves and to ready ourselves? Are we ready to live into our full potential? Amen?
you. Make us more like the kingdom of God. And to do so, one of the ways we do that is by helping to support the work and the ministries of this church. And today I ask that as the baskets or, or the plates are passed around, please put your prayer cards in if you would like. Again, circle no if it is not confidential and we will not, and if you circle no, we will share it. If it is confidential, we won't. Also, you can put your info in as well as you can use the envelope. But you know what, friends? We're going to give an offering as an offering of our hearts and of our commitment to our journey with God. So let the baskets please pass. together in the doxology. that are confidential, but uh, one that isn't, and I share that this is a, this is an exciting one Claire and V had put forth before, and they were praying for a friend of theirs, Dad, who they thought had had a stroke, and they literally were going to pull him off of life support.
is still with us, Jesus Carrillo, for healing, for he has opened his eyes. God is good all the time. Amen. I also share prayers for others, some who are seeking guidance for relationships, others who are looking for a temporary place to live, others who are just going through different transitions. So we lift them up in prayer as well. And for all our congregants facing challenges, God, may your presence and strength be known. For a number of We offer these spoken prayers. We are assured that you know the particular concerns that lie heaviest in our hearts and minds. So receive these now, our silent prayers, as we offer them to you. <coughs> we thank you, compassionate God, that you hear the prayer of every heart. Thank you for hearing us in every situation of life. Help us to support one another, rejoicing with those who rejoice, weeping with those who weep. For we want to be joined together as members of the body of Christ in unity, loving one another and serving the world. We want, like Jesus, to respond to each human being who crosses our path with sensitivity and compassion. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Join me in the communion responses. God is with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give God thanks and praise. It is good to give a thing to do. We praise you and thank you, Creator. You are the source of contentment. You love us faithfully. You have compassion for our needs. We are your children, the little ones you have chosen. Be pleased then with the prayer which we now offer as we offer to you as we say. God, we praise you and thank you for Jesus the Christ. Christ has borne our grief and has shared our sorrows and has cleansed and healed us by the touch of his hand. Christ has welcomed our departed loved ones into your peace and infinite love. Christ now breathes into our hearts the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the, comforter, the gift of peace. And on the night before he died, Jesus gathered his friends together for a meal. And just as he broke boundaries, he didn't go into secluded places or the temples or anything. He went out into nature and transcended all boundaries. So with this inclusivity, not just 12 people, but this gathering was for everybody, and not only for those that were present, but also for all of us. So what did he do? He said, how can I pass this on? He took a simple piece of bread, 
He blessed it, broke it, gave it to those at table, saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Not only for you, but for everybody, for, for the, all of humanity, for all of creation. We are all together in this. And do likewise in memory of me. And in a similar fashion, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he passed it to those as it is passed to you and to me this day. Here, take and drink of this cup, for in it is poured forth my blood, my life essence, all of who I am. Drink and drink fully, so that indeed you might have a new covenant. That is the gift of life. Remember this day all those who follow in the path of Christ, who struggle for justice, for love, and for peace. Bind us together with all those who fight for your cause. Send us out to help others recognize your, and per, your, your presence in them, and to transform your church, our city, and planet into a wholesome spiritual community as wide and deep as your love. Amen. Friends, let us share with one another from our hearts the prayer of Jesus. Our Father God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not be led into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the dominion and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends here at MCC, United Church of Christ in the Valley, as with all MCCs and UCCs around the world, we share and celebrate an open communion. That means you need not be a member of this church or of any church to come forward and to take part in this meal. The ushers will, uh, will guide you forward in a moment to the servers who will be up front. As you come to us, you can take the elements, dip it in grape juice, place it upon your tongue, and then one of us shall share a prayer with you. If you would like to come forward, though, and receive the elements today, but not with um, an intercessor, but just between you and God, there is a station to your left that's a private communion station of consecrated elements to which you might go at any time during this meal. Let us have no barriers except the ones we put up. But if we want to stay where we're at today and just be, it's okay. God will find you. Because <laughs> God knows where you are. Let's keep this meal one with the other. May the acolytes and servers please join.
communities, not for ourselves, but for, and for, for all the who are able to be here today, for all those who still feel unworthy, for those who are suffering, for the, all of creation, for the earth, for everything. We are all one. Anyone is in need of private personal prayer, I will be available on the chapel on the street side immediately after the service. But now please rise and join us in our song of sending, Great is Your Faithfulness, number 423.